Good day, mates. This just in from the Outback Broadcasting Corporation. Home of the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Well, mostly, we're about to blow your bloomin' socks off with some news hotter than a kangaroo in a sauna. Brace yourselves for a telly event that's gonna make the Sydney Opera House look like a backyard shed. Got your popcorn ready? Good. Stay tuned for the most shocking interview of the century, where we put the mad in madness and the fun in fundamentally absurd. In one corner, we have Tucker Carlson, Fox News' very own kangaroo on steroids. With the bounce of a roo and the ferocity of a dingo, Tucker's got a knack for stirring up quite the dust storm down under. He's a verbal acrobat, flipping through topics faster than a kangaroo on a hot tin roof. His unique brand of journalism, as Aussie as a meat pie at the footy finals. And in the other corner we have Vladimir Putin, Russia's bear wrestler in chief. If he's not riding horseback shirtless, he's wrestling bears for breakfast. Putin is as Russian as vodka on a cold winter's night, and he's got the political prowess to match. He's been known to play the game of politics like a masterful game of chess, always three moves ahead. So brace yourselves for a showdown of epic proportions. It's the verbal gladiator versus the strategic mastermind. Let the battle of wits or lack thereof begin. As the interview kicks off, Tucker leaps into action, throwing questions like boomerangs. With a sparkle in his eye and a smirk on his face, Carlson launches the first question. Mr. Putin, is it true that you once wrestled a bear with nothing but a toothpick and a bottle of vodka? The absurdity of the question hangs in the air. Putin chuckles, replying with a twinkle in his eye. No, Tucker. The bear had the vodka. I had the toothpick. The exchange continues, each question more ridiculous than the last. Have you ever tried to ride a unicycle on the moon? Carlson inquires. Putin, without missing a beat, retorts, only on Tuesdays, Tucker, but the moon's gravity messes with my balance. Carlson, undeterred, throws another curveball. Mr. Putin, what's your opinion on the theory that kangaroos are secretly running the Australian government? Putin, with a straight face, replies, Tucker, I can neither confirm nor deny that, but I have been in intense negotiations with a kangaroo named Bruce. He's a tough negotiator. The conversation zips back and forth like a ping-pong match on fast forward. Is it true that you've discovered the secret to eternal youth? Carlson probes. Well, Tucker, Putin responds, I do have a portrait in my attic that ages while I stay the same. But let's keep that between us, shall we? Through the flurry of nonsensical questions and absurd answers, the interview unfolds like a bizarre comedy sketch. Each question more outlandish than the last, each answer more ludicrous. The tension, the absurdity, and the comedy blend together, creating an atmosphere of surreal hilarity. And just like that, the first round is over. Who's winning? Who's losing? Who knows? As we dive back into the absurdity, Putin takes the reins, leading the conversation to even stranger territory. Suddenly, Putin starts to turn the tables on Carlson, asking him questions instead. Tucker, he begins, If you were a Russian nesting doll, how many dolls would you consist of and why? Caught off guard, Carlson stammers, Well, um, I suppose I'd be five dolls because, um, each one represents a different aspect of my personality. Putin, smirking, retorts, Only five? I always pegged you for a ten-doll kind of guy, Tucker full of surprises. The conversation spirals further into the realm of the bazaar. Putin, with a mischievous glint in his eyes, asks, and tell me, Tucker, if you were a Siberian bear, would you prefer the forest or the tundra? Carlson, now fully embracing the absurdity, replies, definitely the tundra. I mean, who doesn't love a good snowball fight? They both laugh, and even the audience can't help but join in. Before we know it, Putin is asking Carlson about his preference for borscht versus beetroot salad his thoughts on the Russian ballet, and even his favorite brand of vodka. Carlson, in turn, gives increasingly comedic responses, managing to keep his wit sharp amidst the absurdity. The conversation takes unexpected twists and turns, with Putin asking Carlson if he prefers Russian winter or summer, to which Carlson quips, I prefer fall. It's the only time I can wear my favorite fur hat without sweating or freezing. The dialogue is filled with comic relief, as Putin unexpectedly turns the interview into a comedic game of 20 questions. It's a surreal spectacle, leaving everyone in stitches. As the second round draws to a close, we're left wondering if we're watching an interview or a comedy sketch. As our interview reaches its climax, the tension is palpable. 
or is that just the absurdity? Now, we're moving into the final round, the rapid fire round, where the questions are as fast as a kangaroo on a skateboard, and the answers as unpredictable as a platypus at a disco. The pace is quicker than a dingo in a donut shop, and the absurdity is cranked up to 11. Tucker Carlson, ever the consummate professional, fires off the first question. Mr. Putin, if you were a pizza, what toppings would you have? Without missing a beat, Putin retorts, I'd be a bear and vodka pizza, Tucker. It's a Russian delicacy. The back and forth continues, a comedic tennis match of the absurd. Mr. Putin, do you prefer cats or dogs? Carlson inquires. I prefer Siberian tigers. Putin fires back, a twinkle in his eye. The laughter in the room is as infectious as a catchy tune on a summer's day. The tension that was once palpable is now replaced with the delightful absurdity of this final exchange. Mr. Putin, if you could be any superhero, who would you be? Asks Carlson. I'd be Super Putin, Tucker. I'd fly around the world bringing peace and vodka to everyone, Putin replies, a sly grin on his face. In the midst of this rapid-fire round, both characters are trying to outdo each other in terms of absurdity. It's a spectacle to behold, a comedy show unlike any other filled with laughs, surprises, and a healthy dose of the unexpected. The round concludes, leaving both participants breathless and the audience in stitches. This interview, this exchange of words, ideas, and ridiculousness has been a journey into the absurd, a romp through the comical, and a dive into the wonderfully bizarre. And there you have it, folks, an interview unlike any other. Or was it? Well, that was... something. Let's try to make sense of it all, shall we? Good heavens, where do we even start? Our two main actors, Tucker Carlson and Vladimir Putin, surely outdid themselves. I mean, who would have thought that an interview could turn into a kangaroo boxing match, a tutorial on Russian ballet, and a cooking lesson on borscht? All at once? First off, let's address the elephant in the room. Or should I say the kangaroo? When Carlson challenged Putin to a boxing match, I'm sure none of us saw that coming. But what was even more shocking was Putin's response. With a gleam in his eye and a sly smile, he said, Why box when we can dance? And then, before we knew it, the interview turned into a full-blown ballet masterclass. Who knew that Putin, the leader of one of the world's superpowers, was also a prima ballerina in his spare time? And let's not forget Carlson trying to keep up with the pirouettes and jets, looking as graceful as a sack of potatoes. Then, in a surprising twist, Putin decided to turn the interview into a cooking show. The man pulled out a pot, some beetroot, and a few other ingredients, and started cooking borscht right there. And while the soup simmered, he started reciting Pushkin's poetry, making it the most cultured cooking show in history. Carlson, not to be outdone, decided to contribute his own recipe to the mix. And what was his choice? A good old American hot dog. The sight of Putin trying to figure out how to eat a hot dog while Carlson struggled with a spoonful of borscht is something that will be etched in our memories forever. And let's not forget the surprising moment when Putin started to play the balalaika, serenading Carlson with a Russian folk song. And Carlson, he decided to join in with a harmonica. The resulting duet was, let's just say it was uniquely harmonious. In summary, this interview was like a roller coaster ride through the outlandish, the whimsical, and the downright weird. It was an unforgettable spectacle of dance, cooking, poetry, music, and yes, a kangaroo boxing match. And there you have it. The most absurd, ridiculous, and downright hilarious interview in history. Or was it just another day at the Outback Broadcasting Corporation? Tune in next time to find out.